in a way that it helps us understand better the different uh, roles, especially the gender roles in women that women play in, um, in in various environments. It could be home, it could be work, it could be different forms of social care, um, especially in the home front, because, you know, uh, that it, at home front, we, we have unpaid labor, labor work. And uh, what does that mean for us? Uh, and, and also, uh, if I take the scenarios of women in, in the workforce, uh, where do we fit in? And we take ourselves in more in an open environment, where do we see ourselves fit in? So it helps us to, uh, to navigate the different platforms um, and understanding the embodiments of uh, different contexts as well. And where do we place ourselves in in those um, in those arenas? I think that the main thing to say is that aging is not is not a moment in life, but aging is a lifelong process. And from that point of view, I think that feminist political ecology helps because uh, this is a framework that helps us to understand the world and to imagine the future in incorporating a gender perspective, an environmental perspective, in, in a political perspective that relates all these dimensions. So um, if we think of aging as a long life process, then the main thing is the interrelationship with um, other people, with the environment, with the possibilities of the future. So I think that um, what is important about feminist political ecology and aging is that it emphasizes this um, autonomy and this possibility of also determining the life that as an old people you are going to lead, not just for yourself, but in relation to others and to your environment. So climate change is both a disruptor and enabler of individuals and collectives' livelihoods, knowledges, and social organizations. So FP helps us uh, to look into how women and men are affected and how they embody and respond to the change, to the impacts of climate change. Uh, with FP, we can understand how these embodied experiences connect or influence each other across scale. So we are able to look into gender relations within the households or between the households as power relations. We look into how they connect to the community, to policies and legislations, and up to the global level. And understanding these interconnections is important because it, it allows us to identify the tensions and contradictions between them, as well as the synergies and trade-offs between them. Uh, this can be quite helpful in designing interventions, uh, which avoid uh, maladaptive interventions that may further mar marginalize the most vulnerable in a population. So FP helps us to understand how diverse knowledges are changing in the context of climate change and doing so entails acknowledging the plurality of knowledges and that there are many alternatives to solutions. And this contributes to decolonizing academia as well as dispelling the impression of the, vict of the passive victim that is often uh, portrayed uh, in most climate change uh, discussions. I mean, for me, feminist political ecology um, is, not, is not a fixed set of tools, right? It's more like a way, um, uh, a toolbox that, that we use to, to do research and uh, to try to understand the reality we are we we live in um, and yeah in the case of of my research i conducted uh, um, i'm studying processes of agrarian transformation in maharashtra india focusing on on women farmers um, so understanding these um these labor relations and also how different uh, subjects, um, how subjectivities are formed, 
and performed in relation to access, use, uh, knowledge over natural resources. This is something that definitely feminist political ecology helped me to do. And also seeing these gender labor relations and these gender power relations as never fixed, but all, always open to change. Uh, feminist political ecology helped me to understand extractivism in more critical uh, way, not just a sectoral, you know, mining issue or just economic model, but also uh, rooted in the colonial logic. So thinking about the colonial critics, it's opening more critical analysis to extractivism, um, the pattern of economic, which is need to critical uh, because, um, you know, in the context of uh, colonial logic and it's 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 possible actually to uh, bring more uh, critical analysis but also possible networking to chilling to challenge uh, practice of extractivism um, not just in the mining issues for example um, that's the first the second is um, understanding about the community around extractivism extractivist project um, in the past uh, I just even uh, understanding people in the context like binary pro and anti-mining, but um, uh, FPA is bring me, help me to understand the multiple identity of people around extractivist project, which, which is fluid, um, shaped by uh, extractivism, but also um, there are people and nature also save extractivism. So bring intersectionality and the everyday and embodied experiences of people which are situated within and relate to specific ecologies, include the question of care and also uh, social reproduct reproduction. It's helped me to navigate despite extractivism. Um, the space of resistance. So um, the the space in between, you know, in between spaces of extractivism, there is there is um, uh, resistance. It's not just resistance, <clears throat> which is usually expressed like you know demonstration or um, uh, kind of that, like like physical expression, but also hiding. Um, like for example, the quiet encroachment, the things that that we not think there is a resistance, um, but there is resistance. So that that's the main uh, uh, useful things for me um, to understanding about um, how uh, FPA uh, make me uh, looking extractivism differently. FB has helped me to understand the multifaceted nature of resources. My work is on water, sanitation, climate change, displacement. So FB has helped me to unravel different attributes of these resources, the material, the biophysical, the cultural, and how these multiple ontologies mean different things to different people. And it also means looking at uh, the interface between power and politics, the politics of knowledge, and also contestations around these resources, as well as links to wider political economy. So these are very much sites of injustice often with very unequal pains and gains. And when we unpack the politics of knowledge here, as well as the power knowledge interfaces, um, FP allows me to unravel these injustices, but also to focus on issues of cognitive and epistemic justice, to acknowledge uh, the invisible rights and perspectives of marginalized people, so indigenous people, often uh, women whose resources are very embedded in customary systems, they don't have formal rights to resources, and also resource users who are often considered to be poor, backward, etc. FP has helped make some of these uh, complexities as well as invisible perspectives visible. So you become an apprentice, you try and amongst local people, you do long-term field work, one tries to understand livelihood practices, complexities of managing the commons, tenure, etc. And it helps to lift these perspectives. And this is due to the FP commitment of seeing multiple um, and also drawing on feminist 
critiques of mainstream science and methodology. So a field that actually looks barren and an investor wants to grab it will mean very different things to a farmer, a pastoralist, et cetera. And you know, they could be, it could be very, very productive when seen from a different lens. And so when you use different types of methodologies, long-term fieldwork, visual methodologies, you can try and unpack uh, some of these hidden perspectives. Finally, more recently, together with Wendy Harcourt in WeGo, we've been using FPE and the decolonial lens uh, to look at degrowth. So this feminist lens allows us to tease out some of the non-material aspects um, of some of the issues around scarcity and limits missed in conventional debates around growth and degrowth. So we focus on issues of care, solidarity, reciprocity, and issues that allow for human flourishing as well as uh, human and environmental well-being. Also, these, the whole idea of limits and growth, these are molded by issues of coloniality, race, class, and gender. And feminist and decolonial perspectives allow us to question the destructive capitalist underpinnings of growth and also align uh, with calls uh, to, to grow and to, to live within new limits. But it does mean looking critically at notions of limits too. You know, this can fall disproportionately on the vulnerable and poor, who is defining these limits, et cetera. So feminist thinking around care can reset the growth imaginary and inform radical change, thus contributing uh, to visions to build society based on caring relations, well-being, and equity. Mm -hmm.